Guys, sorry I'm a couple minutes late there. I'm dealing with a couple of things that I had to get squared away. So uh, just uh, anxious to you know go play a game again, of course, after the week off. Uh, our captains this week will be uh, Kobe and Beckett on defense. Uh, it'll be Knox, Sheldon, and Kane Madden on offense. Uh, so we'll rely on those guys for great leadership this week and have a great week of preparation. But I know we're looking forward to weather's going to be great and uh, looking forward to having a home game here at home. And uh, I know kids are excited to go play a game. Well, Doc, it seems like a broken record, but you're you're going up against another opponent that uh, only has one game under their belt. It seems like that's happened to you four or five times this year. And does it make it especially difficult considering that, that UMass's opponent was Georgia Southern last time, especially, you know, from a defensive standpoint, Georgia Southern runs such a funky offense? Well, there's no question. I mean, you know, they're an option team. And, you know, that being said, you know, we had to go way back to, you know, when their coordinator, when it was Eastern Kentucky and other places these coaches have been. So at Florida State and South Florida, et cetera. So, you know, to get an idea of what we're going to get. But, uh, you know, it's the same old, I know I sound like a broken record, but, uh, you know, here we are with a lot of unknowns again for the for this game here because they only do have one game under their belt. So, you know, we'll go back and study them and, and, and work hard and, and uh, make sure we're prepared. But again, it's going to be early on in that game. There's going to be a lot of adjustments that are going to have to be made, uh, you know, on both sides of the ball. So we got to make sure we do a great job of doing that. What did you see? for? I was say, how difficult is it for you to prepare for an opponent when you don't have a lot of film, there's not a lot to go off of, and you're going off of results that maybe occurred in, in past years? Well, I mean, it's, there's no doubt it's difficult. And, you know, from a personnel standpoint as well, you don't have a whole lot of tape on them as far as their personnel is concerned. But, uh, you know, the biggest thing, I think when you get in a situation like this, you just got to worry about yourself. You know, us as a football team, you know, it's you know we got a standard that we have to play up to. And, uh you know, we've got to get better as a team and uh, we got to make sure that uh, we do what we do really well in all three phases and, and then have the ability, you know, on offense, defense and special teams when adjustments need to be made that we get those adjustments made from a coaching standpoint. So I, I mentioned before, I think the big thing is, is we got a veteran group up front offensively. That's where it all starts. You know, those guys up front having to make adjustments as far as their defense is, is concerned. And then you know, on special teams, we're just going to do what we do and try to do it really well, you know. And then, of course, uh, you know, offensively, uh, like I said, we got that group up front and uh, we just got to, like I say, line up and, and make sure that we're prepared and, and ready to go and, and able to make adjustments when we have to. Doc, is the, uh, was the transition easy? You're getting ready for one opponent, then you stop and you got to get ready for another. I mean, is it just you got more prep time now, you know, because – Again, we're in weird times here. No, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, we, we, I think we got that call, what, Tuesday or whatever it was. I think it was Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever it was last week. And, of course, immediately, you, you know, you're you you know, you're prepared for, you know, FIU and all of a sudden, bang, that's done and you get ready to start ready for Because you got to give them a couple of days not off, but where we didn't actually practice. And, you know, but it's, you know, like I say, we've got to, we, you know, and I've said it a thousand times, I mean, we got to control what we can control. Uh, unfortunately, the FIU game was canceled. Fortunately for us, uh, we're excited that UMass is coming to town and uh, that we have another game. If, if, if uh, you know, Mike and David Steele and UMass didn't agree to play this game, hell, we'd be sitting here again, you know, waiting to go play middle next week. So it's, I think it's a great opportunity for us and, you know, playing an excellent program in UMass and uh, we're excited about it. Doc, I know you've spent a lot of time over the years talking about special teams, and, and it did seem like UMass struggled in special teams against Georgia Southern a couple couple times that Georgia Southern really flipped the field to take a big lead early and, and put that game away. Is that especially critical this week? Well, it always does. I mean, special teams always are, you know, play a critical part of any game because it changes the field position. And uh, so it'll be, you know, it'll be big in this game here as well as the rest of the year. So, uh, you know, we work really hard in that area. We spend probably more time than anybody in the country on special teams. And our coaches do a great job of preparing our kids. And I think the one thing that we've done this year uh, is we've spent a lot more time getting younger players, you know, prepared to play special teams. You know, a lot of people, well, you just go out there and run down on a kickoff, but that's really not the case. I mean, you got, you know, you got coach the speed zone and the, hard hat zone and when to throw by and when not to overrun the ball and a lot of things those kids have young players have to learn so when you get the opportunity to go in there and play they understand what to do and same thing with kickoff return with the, with the different techniques and fundamentals are involved <coughs> excuse me in all special teams 
you know, we spend a lot of time with young players more so this year than ever, getting more players ready to go. So hopefully that'll pay off. I know that your receiver core has been kind of, you know, banged up over the last few weeks. Do you expect to get, you know, anybody back, especially after a couple weeks off? Well, I think, I think with the exception of Brock, you know, we'll have them all back. And, uh, you know, the, the thing I'm excited about with that group is, you know, we, there's no doubt. I mean, against uh, I think La Tech, we lost all three of them, you know, and uh, or after La Tech or whatever. And, you know, we had some other kids come in there and, and step up and make plays, which was great to see and see some young kids getting better. So, you know, I think for the most part, we'll be as healthy this week as we've been in a while. I've got two questions for you, Coach. One, how do you pre- what do you see in the UMass tape that is, is a challenge and how difficult is it to prepare for them? Well, I think uh, number one, you know, they, they deserve an awful lot of credit because they've totally revamped that roster. I mean, you look at that team from what it was a year ago to what we saw last week, there's totally different roster. Uh, players are all totally different. And from a personnel standpoint, they're a lot, lot better than what they were a year ago. So that's a credit to that staff and what they've done. And, you know, it's the same old deal when you're preparing for a lot of, you know, there's a lot of unknowns in first games and this will be a lot of unknowns from a personnel standpoint as well as a scheme standpoint. So, you know, like I said, we just got to do a great job uh, about us being prepared as a football team, as a coaching staff to make adjustments quick and and, uh, do what we do really well. The other question is, what are your weekly COVID preparations like? What do you guys, what do you all do as far as testing and trying to keep your guys safe? Well, we have, we have a policy within our conference, just like SEC and everybody else does. We test three times a week, you know, and, uh, you know, we probably, we, not probably, we test as much as anybody. We've got the same protocols as far as return to play that everybody else in the country has as well, ACC, whatever. So, you know, I know Mike Hamrick, uh, our athletic director, Beatrice, and, and our staff have done just a tremendous job along with our doctors of doing everything we can possibly do, you know, to stay as safe as we possibly can and, uh, and keep this thing going. For the most part during your tenure, it's been, you know, three, four non-conference games and then roll into conference play and it's conference basically throughout the rest of the season. Is there any type of uh, difficulty going from conference play and being in that mindset to go in non-conference? Yeah, there shouldn't be with our football team right now. I mean, we got really high expectations and, and standards and goals. And, you know, I think, I think, you know what, I think this year, Grant, I think our kids are just so damn happy when they get the chance to play a game. You know, I mean, they're excited – you know, when he gets a chance to play. And uh, this Saturday, we got an off another opportunity, and uh, I'm sure they'll be excited to go play again. So, you know, they've had a week off, and they're ready to go again. It's easy, Coach, to go talk ahead. to get your players to not think about that ranking and just think about a team that's only won one game in its last two years? Well, I think, uh, you know, I think number one, you know, I tell our kids every week, you know, every, every week you, know, you guys are going to pick up the paper or whatever you pick up and ESPN, whatever, and somebody's going to get beat you shouldn't. I mean, it happens every weekend. It happened last weekend. It's going to happen this weekend. You got to make sure it's not you. And if you got a mature football team, you know, there's no quite the most prepared team always wins. And uh, that being said, uh, we got to make sure that, uh, you know, we're the most prepared football team and, uh, I guarantee you, any, any player that, uh, you, you know, this game you can't play by going out there and just kicking off the ball or whatever. You better have your – you better be prepared to play the game or you'll get beat. And uh, we do uh, – hopefully, we, you know, we'll do a great job of making sure our kids understand that. Is there any other advantage to having, uh, you know, going some of these weeks and not playing almost like – almost like do you look at this as a buy in a way? Well, I think the only advantage you have is if you got a couple guys nicked up, you have a chance of getting them back totally healthy, you know, and <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. After that, you know, after the last game, you know, against Florida Atlantic and, you know, I think, I think you, you saw last week after what Florida Atlantic did to UTSA, they're, they're a pretty solid football team. You know, they've lost two games and going on two years now and both of them were to Marshall. So, uh, you know, we felt going in that was a pretty solid team and, and I think they have a solid team. So there were some people banged up and beat up a little bit, but, if there is an advantage at all, it's you got a chance to get guys back and, and totally healthy. So I think that's happened. How healthy is everyone at the moment? Well, right now they're pretty healthy. So hope we get through a couple more days, we'll be fine. Uh, 
Okay, guys. Anything else? Go You're good. Good. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.